where it is. All right, guys, well, it's time for this episode's interview. And today I have on uh, SGX coach, Jason Archer. Jason's with uh, CrossFit North Phoenix. He is uh, CrossFit level one and two certified. He's also SGX level one and level two. Uh, he's also the founder of Hardwater, which we're going to talk about, uh, the host of the Hardwater Radio podcast and Do the Right Thing podcast. So coach, how's it going today? Going well, man, yourself? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk to you. I'm excited to be here, man. I appreciate you yeah. reaching out and having me on. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's kind of dive into it. Let's start off with, um, well, I, I want to know what uh, Hardwater is, where this came from, where this developed. So let's just start talking about that. Yeah, for sure. A lot of people ask where that came from, uh, and it's often mispronounced. But the thing of it is, back in the day, I had a long-term relationship come to an end. And at that point in time, I took a hard look at myself in the mirror and just realized how gooey and soft I had become. And I'm not just speaking physically, I'm speaking mentally as well. I basically had, you know, had not tied those two things together and created the man that I am today, nor was I even in a spot to do that. But the first thing that I did was I started looking at the physical and I went into a few gyms, the Globo gyms, the Gold's gyms, that sort of thing. And you know, while you can get some work done there, it just wasn't uh, what I was looking for. And so I somehow stumbled across a CrossFit gym in town and ended up going to a class. And in that class, I saw people just going insane, crazy in this triple digit Arizona heat, shirts off, weights being thrown, you know, grunting, you know, everything that you could possibly do to put effort into creating a positive outcome for themselves. And at the time, I didn't know it. I didn't know all the terminology around CrossFit. And of course, it's been adopted by OCR and GORUCK and all the rest of these companies now. But WAD was just an acronym for workout of the day. And so as I saw these people going hard in this workout, it just made sense to me that these people were hard waters. They were going hard in these WADs. And so the lifestyle brand evolved from just putting those two words together. And, you know, of course, it, it is synonymous with hard water which is a word that's common, especially out here in Arizona where there's so many minerals. So it's just a word that it fit together and rolled off the tongue. And the purpose of the brand is to represent people who are doing hard things and doing their best to crush mediocrity and create mastery around the things they want to bring into being in their own life. And so that's basically in a nutshell, kind of the origins of it. There's you know a lot of, of tentacles that branch off of that in the mindset, physical piece, but that would, that would kind of seal up the nutshell. And, and I, I want to dive a little bit deeper on some of these topics, but it sounds like that's kind of your, your philosophy, your mentality with, uh, well, it sounds like not just training with clients, but just this is how you live your life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like everything kind of starts with the physical. I mean, you can argue that it starts with the mental, but the results that we create are the result of driving our bodies through this world. So if you think of yourself as multiple people, or as multiple beings, you know, that you have a mind and that mind is constantly chattering. And it's only the person who learns how to get through the monkey mind and start controlling the vehicle, which he or she drives, which is the body that we were given and blessed with that actually create results in the physical world. So the results in the physical world piece come from moving in the physical world and moving in the physical world as a result of controlling your mindset. So you know, depending on where you're coming from, you can influence your mind or your body going from the inside to the out or the outside to the end. Um, and probably the easiest thing to feel better about yourself is to just get up and do something. So, you know, go for a walk, you know, move, do any, do anything that's going to allow you to say, I did something today, I accomplished something today. And then that, of course, influences your mindset until you can get to the place where, you evolve from the inside out. You start your day with a meditation or you start your day with intention and then you go and you physically create that intention in the real world. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, it's like trying to start a new habit or or even break a bad one where it's very intentional, right? In the beginning where you, you can't really get by without, you know, consciously saying, I'm gonna do this thing or not do this thing or whatever it is. But the goal is with all of this is then it just becomes natural, right? Where I'm not thinking about it anymore. This is who I am. And this is just how it's going to be. Yeah, there's there's a lot behind that statement. Uh, if you've ever read, there's a great old book called Psycho, Psycho Cybernetics. And a lot of the success literature sort of evolved from that. But one of the big misconceptions that evolved from the doctor who wrote that book, um, 
uh, was he was originally a plastic surgeon and he observed that it took people about two weeks to form a new attachment to their faces. So if they had a nose job, uh, it takes about 14 to 21 days for them to adjust how they're seeing themselves. And that was sort of mis extrapolated into this idea that it takes 21 days to form a habit. Uh, but research tells us it takes on average 66 days. So at the point at which you wake up and you have a routine and you feel an absence from your life or you feel a hole in your day, if you don't execute that routine, that's what you're looking for. So ever how many days it takes you to get to that point, um, that's really uh, what you're talking about when you're getting to habituation. Like I missed being at the gym today and I felt it. Not I missed being at the gym today and who gives a shit, right? It's like, who, who cares? I care. And, and the reality is it, it doesn't support me in going down another road if I'm moving away from the thing that I say I want to create. So habituating that, um, you know, uh, together with your mindset and with your physicality is really the key at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think that what you said right there, that's um, kind of the key to all of this is, am I, sometimes I, I like to look at it like, am I the type of person that would do this? Whether, you know, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, am I the, am I the type of person that's going to not skip out on a workout or it, am I the type of person that's going to whatever, you know, cheat on a spouse or, or whatever it is. And it's, it, that's such an important question because until you can really answer that question, right. There's so, you, you don't really have control over which, which direction your life's going to go. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a really powerful way of thinking about this. And probably the power of that is lost on the subtlety of that statement. So I'm going to give you all the props in the world for saying that, because what you're actually doing is you are, you're doing a form of, of visualization. Uh, you're doing a form of vision work, which is you're projecting into the world, the thing that you want to become. And so that vacuum, then if it's powerful enough, pulls you along, right? So there's this thing that I want to become and I'm putting that in front of me and it's so big that there's a vacuum behind it. And I want it to be so powerful that it pulls me into that place, whether it's weight loss or, you know, running a beast or, you know, deadlifting 400 pounds, whatever the thing is. Um, if you don't have that, then basically when you wake up every day, you're lost and there's no worse place to be than waking up with no purpose. Yeah, Absolutely. So that, that makes, uh, I have a question to ask you about this then. Maybe you have some good insight. In your experience, I, I can see a couple different ways. I have this goal to achieve weight loss. We'll just say that. I, I want to be this body fat or whatever it might be. Is it kind of how I was saying, you know, do I want to, is it I'm the person that I, I'm going to act the way to get to that or I need to flip it? And I need to be that person. I don't know if this is making any sense at all, but do I, do I view it as the approach of where I am now and where I have to go, or I need to act like that person in the future? Um, Cause I, I, I guess what I'm, where I'm coming from with this is I know so many people where they, they have a goal of something, you know, I want to make more money. I, I want to whatever, get more fit. And it's just going to happen, right? Like a lot of people have this mentality where if I get enough years to go by, I, I'm going to reach this goal. It's just how things go. I'm almost like I'm entitled for, for this to happen and how, you know, that can be such a negative thing where we just expect that this is going to get there instead of thinking, well, I'm not there right now. So I'm clearly not doing the things that I need to do to get there. So what, what would, what kind of approach should I be taking? It's, it's, should I think of myself as that person or is it just, Hey, I need to figure out what little steps I need to take to get there. And I might just be rambling. I don't know, but maybe you can make better, <laughs> better of this. Yeah, it's a big question, honestly. And I think uh, rambling is good in a lot of these conversations <laughs> because that's how humans think. You know, it's uh, you have to risk saying the wrong thing to get to the right thing. So yeah. I appreciate you um, being vulnerable, vulnerable enough to do that. And I think that at the highest level, it works both ways. So as we were saying earlier, you can influence your mindset by what you do, and you can influence what you do by your mindset. So I think it depends on the individual. And as a trainer or as a coach, it's, it's your job really to identify which is more motivating for the person that, you're, that you want to help. Because at the end of the day, compliance is the biggest challenge in any form of a fitness endeavor, whether it's nutrition or running or you know CrossFit or whatever. 
getting people to comply with what you want them to do is the most difficult piece. And you're asking them to do hard things, you know, and they're not, they don't want to do hard things. Let's just, I mean, I, there's the, I don't want to do hard things half the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a part of developing what I like to call a move anyway mindset. And if you read my uh, posts, my daily posts on Instagram, I always hashtag move anyway, because it doesn't matter how I feel if the result matters to me. Okay. So how I feel has to be separated from what I want to create. And that's kind of what you were touching on from, you know, um, you know, creating the, the, the momentum toward getting what you want, the who do I want to become. And I think the projecting who you want to become into the future, projecting that out there is one way of overcoming that stagnation of, I don't feel like it today. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to do my freaking burpees. I don't want to, you know, drive to the gym, whatever the thing is, overcoming that is this process of constantly setting aside how you feel in favor of what you want to create. And so what I challenge people to do is observe themselves. And this, it takes a little practice, but if you wake up and you're not feeling it, and this, I'll be honest, this morning I woke up and I wasn't feeling it. And so, you know, I had to have a conversation with myself. I'm like, listen, man, this is not who you are. You're not going to sit around and do nothing today. So let's get up, let's get off your ass and let's get moving. You know, let's get the first thing done, get up, make the bed, brush your teeth, you know, let's start mm -hmm. small, you know, mm -hmm. and then those little things build into larger things that can then cause your feelings to change. So if it's a feeling thing, I want to move so that I can control how I feel. And if it's a movement thing that I want to control how I feel to make me move, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you turning my question in, into better terminology <laughs> and, <laughs> and explaining it way better. Um, no, it, so you kind of, you jumped ahead. One of the things I really, I wanted to ask you, knowing I was going to talk to you is this idea of like we we have slumps right we have bad days we we have stuff happen um and, and i think you kind of already answered this but it sounds like everything you're saying here this is your solution or maybe your recommendation on when you're when you're not having maybe it's not a great day a week a month whatever it is how do we how do we get out of that now, this sounds like what your approach would be yeah i mean for sure i mean it's i think at the highest level, it's about self-awareness. And really what I think people mean when they say that is self-observation. So I want to basically observe myself. Am I, you know, am I staying in bed? Am I uh, working on the tasks that I agreed to work on? I'm observing myself. And as I'm observing myself, is what I'm observing, is it moving me toward what I want? Or is it moving me away from what I want? And if I have that observation, then it's much easier to make a decision in that moment. But the thing of it is, is if you're having one of those really bad slumps, like there've been times when I've been, you know, weeks, month, you know, where you just don't feel it. And this is real. And I think a lot of times people resort to drugs, you know, to kind of save them that, you know, I'm not living this beer commercial every day I wake up. I'm not, I'm not smiling and surrounded by women in bikinis. So therefore my life is fucked, you mm -hmm. know, but that's not true. The reality is everyone experiences that. And the fastest way out of that is just to force movement upon yourself. That's the feeling piece. So movement changes feeling, feeling changes movement. And so you have to observe where you're at, you know, and once you have that, if you don't have the wherewithal, it's good to have a support system and someone who's willing to be honest with you. So if you are my support system, and you know, and you see that I'm struggling, you see that, you know, normally my morning routine is done by 7am. And you see me sleeping until 10am, or you sent me that text, and I didn't respond until 2pm. You know, it's probably, probably a good idea for me to, to have people in my circle who say, Hey, man, what's going on? Do you do you do you need some support? And if so, what does that look like for you? What are you experiencing? Have you been able to observe yourself? So obviously, the best answer is if you can be your own guru, be that. But if you if you're having a moment of weakness, and we all do, there's nothing wrong with relying on the people in your life who actually care that you create what you say you want to create. Yeah, I know. I love that. And that, that's such a strong point there. And, you know, it, it's we can do a lot on our own. Right. And, and some people are definitely self-motivated and, and they can get a lot of stuff done. But you always have to ask, what more could you have gotten done with? with that person right next to you or, or just a phone call away or, or, or a coach or whatever it is. Um, the, it's like anything, we, we really don't know our limits and 
for us to test it ourselves is such a hard thing. But to have somebody there see what you can't see, um, it, it's it, it can become such a powerful tool for you. 100%, brother. You hit the nail on the head right there. So it sounds, a lot of what you're saying, you know, it's this physical and mental or piece to, you know, if we bring it back to training is it's inter intertwined, right? It's, it's something that we're, we should at least be training or working on together. So I don't know if you have any insights. If, if I'm not deliberately, if let's just say I go to the gym, I pick up some weight, I sweat and I leave and, and that's it. Um, it is, where can I at least start this observation? Like you said, the self observation, what, how, how can I start to maybe consciously think about both sides and not just, Hey, I'm just going to get swole, you know, get a, get a sweat going, whatever it might be. Sure. Yeah. So this is a great question on a lot of levels. I think it really comes down to what you want to create. So if you don't know what you want, right, Alice in Wonderland, any road will get you there, right? If you don't know where you're mm -hmm. going, any road will take you there. So if your goal is to, is to get in a sweat, then I'm just going to leave you alone. Like you did what you wanted to do. If you wanted to sweat, you sweated and you got in, you know, you got your heart rate up, you did whatever you wanted to accomplish and, and you're out of there. If your goal is to, you know, develop a heavy deadlift or a fast mile, that's a completely different conversation. And so coming to that conversation with the idea that, hey, I don't have the answer. And the reason that I know I don't have the answer is because I don't have the result is one of those places where you can say, I haven't been able to do it on my own as of yet. I can continue to struggle and I'm, and I'm observing the fact that I'm struggling based on the fact that I'm measuring myself against the result I want to create. Or I can talk to someone else who has that result and see if I can collapse the time frame. So maybe someone else who has that six minute mile or seven minute mile or whatever, you know, whatever your development goal is at that point can tell you, Hey, you know, try this program. Let's get you running a, a 20 second, 100 meters, you know, and then let's bump that to two, right. And then we'll bump it all the way up to 1600 meters, which would be your mile. And the next thing, you know, you've got a pretty quick mile or you can keep struggling. So I think that when it comes to self-observation, it's just a constant process of measuring yourself against the result that you claim to want. And when I say claim to want, I intentionally use that word because a lot of people will say things that they really don't want out of ego or out of looking good to other people, rather than, you know, saying, listen, you know, I, I'm working out with a bunch of monsters here and you guys, you know, you do the five and a half minute mile all day long, but hey, I'm over here running this 10 minute mile and I'm perfectly cool with that. I just want to get to nine right? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, so just coming down to the purpose, if you can run a nine minute mile or an eight minute mile and deadlift 400 pounds and squat 350, that's probably maybe that's more valuable to you than just being a mile specialist. You know, so what is your goal? Do you want to specialize in a particular thing? Do you want to, you know, run the beast in two hours? What is it that you want to do um, versus what you have? And then we look at the gap. Self-observation based on results, where, I'm in, where am I in the gap? Well, I have to do this, this, and this to cross the gap. And then you go from there. So you just make it, um, you know, a lot of people, like you said, um, will sort of just throw things out there willy-nilly. And that's basically hope, you know, one day. <laughs> mm -hmm. One day. I just remind people that hope is not a strategy, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a strategy. So what is your strategy? And if they don't have one, then you help them develop one. And sometimes that starts with self-observation. Sometimes that just starts with like breaking down ego because it's like, you're not as good as you think you are mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. results. And I'm not telling that because I hate you. I'm telling you that because it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, um, sorry, I just drew a blank right there. You said something that I, I thought was really important and now I can't forget, or now I can't remember it. Um, Happens all the time, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll come back to it as I, as I think of it. Um, sure. so I had a question uh, as we were emailing, you know, before this interview on, on some things to talk about, uh, you wrote something down that I, I would, and it might be kind of what you're touching on right now, but I just wanted to, um, pick your brain a little bit more when you said sure. mindset, skill set, result set. So could you expand on that, that idea right there a little bit? Yeah. You know, I was trying to, not trying to, I was thinking deeply about how I could come up with a succinct way to communicate what I think is necessary to create a particular, 
you know, outcome in your life. And I just came up with this equation and the equation is mindset plus skill set equals result set. And so you look at your result set and you say, okay, well, I want to be able to, you know, like I run marketing for my gym. I want to be able to generate uh, 20 leads per week for my gym. Okay. Am I doing that? Yes or no. Be very black and white. Be very black and white. Forget gray area. Gray area does not exist in the world of results. Mm -hmm. Yes or no. If the answer is no, then my result set is lacking. So I go back to the drawing board and I say, okay, well, am I committed to this? And I start checking in with my mindset around this. Am I committed to doing the work? And I say, okay, well, if I'm committed to doing the work, then you know what? I can develop any skill set because any, any, what one man can do, another man can do. I can develop any skill set. So if I put my mindset together with the skill set, then I end up with the results that, that I want. And I just follow that equation until it actually is true, you know? And then yeah. that creates that circular sort of checking in with the results, coming back to the, do I want to keep doing this? You know, do yeah. I want to keep acquiring the skills? Did I get the result? Yes or no? Keep going. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, that brings me back. I remember what I was going to say when you kind of talked about, um, you know, having a coach basically shrink that gap for you or mm -hmm. shorten the time frame, Right. And that's, that's what our job is there. Uh, we, you're here, you want to get here. We have that gap there. You, you might be able to get there yourself. Absolutely. Right. You might, ha might have that skill set, um, or at least maybe the mindset and you, you, you go on YouTube and you find all this stuff and it takes you a really long time, but you get there, right? Or like you said, you find the person that can give you the skill set. You know, you maybe you have that mindset. You really want to do this. You just don't know what to do, which isn't going to help you get the results. Um, so having that support, having that coach shrink that gap or, you know, sh shrink that time frame to get there is, is kind of the whole point of all this. And I think a lot of people bang their head against the wall when they just, almost like I was saying before, I hope, this is going to work right where just work out harder and you get faster like that maybe right it kind of depends on what you're doing but if you're doing the wrong things you maybe get slower maybe you get hurt maybe you can't can't race or whatever it might be yeah 100 percent, man i i see this all the time in crossfit specifically uh you know we have people in the gym who are more advanced than others our gym specifically, we, we bring in a lot of newbies. We advertise nutrition programs. So we bring in people who are generally obese or have some weight to lose. And we have a mixed population of people who are starting their journey and people who've been there for years and are, you know, well on their way. And a lot of times the people who are well on their way develop this mindset of, oh, well, I've seen everything there is to see from this group or this programming or this gym. Therefore, I need to quit what I'm doing here and I need to go somewhere else or I need to do different programming or I need to do what the Russians are doing to get my weightlifting up. And the reality is, if you look at some of the greatest, like just CrossFitters, for example, they do the same programming that they program for their classes. They just do it at a higher level. Like they're going super hard to create the result. Whereas the guys and gals who think, well, I'm too good for this programming and they go and they try and they jump ship and they do something else longer, harder, you know, or, or they feel like it's going to get them the result when really they haven't given all of themselves to what they just tried. They're not going to get anywhere. And they're doing that because they're not willing to pay a coach to say, listen, that workout you just did in 739, you should be able to do it at world-class pace at 445. Okay. Do we really need to change your programming or do you need to go a little harder today? You know, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to hear that. They just want to hear, okay, well, you know, I can, I can click a button and now I'm on this programming track. <laughs> now mm -hmm. magically everything's going to be different, but that's not how it works. Yeah. It's, you know, that, that bright shiny object syndrome where it's, this guy's doing this over here. This girl's doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that. And, and that might work too, but it doesn't work when you like go here, then there, then there. And and that's the idea, you know, that so many coaches I know talk about a program versus a workout, mm -hmm. right? You can, you can go look up in a magazine and find a workout um, that you go online and you'll be, you know, flooded with all these workouts out there. But how do they, how do they, like you said, take you where you're trying to get? Um, and that's a big difference. Like, are we just trying to sweat? And again, maybe that is your goal, right? You're just, I just need to move and mm -hmm. I don't care about racing or whatever it is, I just have to get up off the couch and move around. Or if I'm trying to get a, a specific, you know, time or distance or whatever it is, or, or lift, 
then uh, th that's where the programs are going to be vital. And uh, I think some people have a hard time accepting that. Absolutely. I think it's more, you know, it's, it's like anything, really. If you go to a social event and you stand on the wall, you know, you're probably not going to have, you know, much of, much of anything of interest happen in and around you that night. But if you go to a social event and you start introducing yourself to people, you know, the point is like what you bring to it is more important than what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you bring half your ass to the workout that you think you're too good to do versus bringing both cheeks and going hard to really push the tempo and see if you can up your score, then that's on you. You know, mm -hmm. the programming, changing programming is not going to cause you to suddenly bring both cheeks to the workout, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, another uh, uh, topic I wanted you to, to dive in a little bit more. Um, so you, uh, another thing you emailed me, um, being a leader of self first and always. Mm. So I'd love to hear just more thoughts on that. Yeah, so this was a huge awakening for me when I got into the personal development world, the mindset world. And I often thought for years and years that a leader was someone with a bunch of followers. And I think that social media has sort of solidified that idea in most people's minds. And the reality is if you're building a business and you have a thousand followers for your business or what have you, and then you put a product out for sale and you sell nothing, but you got 500 likes, you did absolutely nothing. You are not leading anyone because no one was willing to put their money behind what it is that you put out into the world. And so there's this idea that if they don't do that, then, okay, well, I'm just not a leader. And well, the reality is you didn't get the result you wanted, not because you're not a leader, but because perhaps they're all your friends, you know, and maybe they just didn't want that shirt or they don't want your wacky program that everybody on YouTube is selling or whatever the thing is. And so what do you do at that point? Do you quit? You know, do you say, oh, no, I'll never be a leader. I'm never going to I'm never going to have this thing that I want. Or do you regroup and you say, listen, all of the things that I create emanate from me first. And anything that I want to bring into the real world emanates from me. And so being a leader is actually leading yourself first and always having followers is the result of leadership, not the indication thereof. So having followers is the result of being a leader of self. And that might mean you have three followers, but all three of them buy from you and they don't necessarily like everything you put out. Right. So that's the distinction there. And I think a lot of times when people are trying to build something or actively building something, that's a great perspective to hold because very few people are going to vibe with you in reality. There might be a lot of onlookers. There might be some controversy that you post or a thing that you post that gets a lot of attention momentarily. But in the real world, you know, you're going to be lucky to develop you know, a thousand true fans, you know, to, to steal from the article or even a hundred real fans, like people who really are into the way of thinking that you're into. So I think at the end of the day, if you focus on developing the people who really, you know, put their money where their likes are or their hearts are, you're much better off because you know that you've actually had some sort of impact rather than focusing on, well, I put this piece of content out and it didn't get any likes. Therefore, I'm not a leader. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's it's easy to see that relationship, you know, me, me being a business owner as well. And uh, I'll take it any day of the week. Like I, I see, you know, gyms and, and other business out there that have tens, if not hundreds of thousands of followers and things like that. I'll take a hundred if I know every one of them and I know uh, I, I, I can care about them. Like a hundred thousand people, there's no way I can know that many people, right? Like it's it's just how connected can we really be? where I can have this relationship with, with true fans. And, and um, I'll, you know, like I said, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on. I mean, there's actually science around this. There's a number, I don't know if you're familiar with this concept, but there's a number called Dunbar's number, I think it is. I don't think so. And Dunbar's number is basically the study of tribes. And basically, once you get past like 150 people, you can forget it. Like it, you're going to have factions and you're going to have branching off because there's just not enough hours in the day mm -hmm. to have any form of relationship, be even beyond surface level past that many people. 
Well, and that's why when you see an organization grow, it develops, you know, a lower management, a middle management and an upper management, because all of those people sort of faction off into different sections of a company or sections of an organization. And that's necessary to maintain some semblance of, okay, we're still in touch with one another. So there's definitely a lot of science around that. And I would encourage anyone who is curious to look into that because, you know, it's funny, you know, I have, you can look at a a business page, for example, and like you said, there's, oh, there's a hundred thousand likes here. You don't know if those were bought. You don't know if those were organic, but at the end of the day, what you do know is if you go through their timeline and you look at the content, nine times out of 10, you're going to see four likes, 10 likes, 50 likes, you know, unless it's like a celebrity sort of a page where people just like it because, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's, it's a really hard thing to wrap your mind around, you know, it's really hard because you're like, man, I put, I poured my heart and soul into this thing and it's just not getting the attention I expected to get. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You know, because probably half the people who read it didn't interact anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when you put stuff out there and you get, and, you know, maybe you won't, you, you might think I only got four likes. It's like, you got four likes, four people cared enough to, to like it and read it or, you know, whatever it might be. And that's what we should think about is I just reached four people, not, not disappointed. It was only, only four people. Yeah. I mean, I had this, it's funny that we were on this sort of random tangent, but yes. <laughs> like last night I had a guy from my high school that I played little league ball with for one season. Totally forgot him. I, like, yeah. I mean, I've been away from my hometown for almost 30 years. So I've forgotten faces. I've forgotten names. This guy, Dean, he reaches out to me via DM and I have this happen a lot. Oh man, you know, great question. I appreciate you putting that out. I appreciate the thought that you put into it. And I really enjoy the insights that you put forth. I'll take that over a hundred likes any day. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the, that's the shot that keeps you coming back. Right. It's like the hole in one on the ninth tee. And it's just, it keeps you coming back. And that's what I really want to strive to create. I want to create impact more so than attention, not to say that attention can't lead to impact, but the point is like, if you are struggling to get off the ground or you're, or you're starting or you're doing your thing, whatever that thing is, you know, look for indications that you're making a change in someone's life. And that'll be way more impactful than counting up hearts on Instagram or likes on Facebook or whatever the thing is. I mean, and the reality is, I mean, you can't deposit likes and hearts anyway. Yeah, absolutely. You have to deposit sales. Yeah, yeah. You can deposit program <laughs> sales. That's about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I've taken up a lot of your time, but just to, to finish up here, I'd love to, um, I don't know, just kind of, let's say somebody listening, like where, where can they, where should they get started? Right. If we're, I, I need, if I know like the physical aspect, I, I feel pretty good about, but I'm just not putting enough behind it or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm lost. Let's just say that. Where would you recommend or maybe a few steps to kind of get back on track, get going again? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're at that point where you're observing yourself and you're saying, listen, I'm really not where I want to be. You've already started, you know, because mm-hmm. you're dissatisfied with what you have or at least there's some desire to create something different in your life. So give yourself credit for acknowledging the fact that, you know, hey, I'm taking a look at myself and I want to make some changes. So you've already taken step one. Step two would be to decide what you do want. You know, what do you actually want? What do you want your bank account to look like? What do you want your body to look like? What do you want your relationships to look like? You know, what do you want your general well-being to feel like, you know? Decide what that looks like and get really, really clear on it. And then the first thing that I do every morning and I challenge everyone that I work with to do as well is when you open your eyes or even before you open your eyes, if you wake, envision yourself in that place, having already achieved those goals. So every morning I wake up and the first thing I see is I see myself and my wife smiling by the door of our gym with just floods of people coming in and out, right? That's what I see. And that's motivation to get up and start creating the potential for floods of people in and out. (laughs) You know, that's, that's one of the things that I visualize. And then if you don't know how to do that, the next step is to hire someone or talk to someone. I prefer, obviously, if you, if you are serious, you'll hire someone, hire someone to help you get there because they'll collapse timeframes and yeah, they're going to cost you money up front, but you know what? uh, uh, Money is cheaper than time. And uh, you don't, you don't, you want to waste as little as possible. Absolutely. 
Awesome. That, I mean, that's that's such a, a clear, concise way to, to go about this and implement that. And um, I really appreciate you you coming on here and sharing. I know uh, I rambled for sure. I appreciate you bringing us back and um, <laughs> keeping us on track here. But if, if anybody does have more questions for you or wants to learn a little bit more about you, where, where would be some good places to reach out to? Sure, yeah. So, I mean, I am all over the old Instagrams. So at j.c.archer, you can pick me up there if you want to read like a little daily dose of motivation or mindset. Uh, put something out there every single day. If you're in the Phoenix area and you want to drop by CrossFit North Phoenix and say hello, uh, learn a little bit about training programs or nutrition programs, I'll be there always and forever. And if you really want to know a little bit of everything, just go to Hardwater One. That's H-E-R-D-W-O-D-D-E-R-O-N-E.com. And all of my stuff is there. You can pick up the podcast, uh, the clothing line, everything is all right there. Awesome. And I'll put links to all that in the show notes so people can can access it all uh, pretty easily. Uh, so Jason, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure talking to you and I really appreciate you coming on. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity, Mike. Thank you.